This is a lecture by L. Ron Hubbard given on the 20th of July, 1954. The title of this lecture is Consideration and Isness. This lecture is 30 minutes long. Reproduced by Golden Era Productions. Now I want to talk to you about the most fundamental fundamental that can be fundamental below the level of consideration. I haven't talked to you very much about considerations. There really isn't very much to say about considerations, and I made a, a considerable number of lectures on the subject of consideration. Everybody appears to be very confused after I lecture on the subject, because consideration is consideration, and all things are a consideration of the consideration, so that if you consider something which is considerable, why, uh, you have considered it and uh, various phenomena such as space uh, and energy, time, matter, and so forth is produced on the basis of consideration. So consideration of A is senior to A. Uh, consideration of R is senior to R, and consideration of any and all parts of C are, of course, senior to any and all parts of C. Uh, when you're dealing with A, R, and C, you have entered into a very early level of anatomy as far as the business of life is concerned, but you are not into the first and immediate level of anatomy as far as mechanics are concerned. There is a level lying between considerations and A, R, and C, and this is isness. It's the consideration of isness. Things are because you consider that they are, and therefore something that is is considered is. If you don't consider that it is, uh, it of course can be considered to be something else. But if you recognize that it is a consideration, you only have to recognize that it is. If you recognize that something is, then you recognize merely that it is a consideration. As soon as you have recognized that something is, is, you have reduced it to a consideration. And that's that. Now that you know all there is to know about Scientology, what's the matter? Don't you follow me there? All right, we'll go into that again. Considerations are senior to A. Considerations are senior to R and are considered senior to C or any part of C. Uh, one has affinity because he considers he has affinity. One has reality because he considers he has reality. One has agreement because he considers he has agreement. One has disagreement because he considers he has disagreement. One has a third <coughs> dynamic because he considers he has a third dynamic. One has a second dynamic, but some people don't, uh, and so on. Any part of the dynamic principles of existence, uh, create, survive, destroy, uh, A, R, C, uh, the uh, chart of attitudes, top and bottom, uh, the uh, entire scale of emotions, uh, no to mystery, uh, are all preceded by a consideration. In other words, they're postulated into existence. but. Uh, right with consideration, we have the most native and intimate mechanic, which precedes all other mechanics, and that mechanic is isness. We have to consider that we can consider before we can consider an isness. One considers that one considers, and therefore what one considers is, is. So therefore anything that is, is considered as being. What is, is, as it is considered to be. Now, uh, uh, the moment that you recognize then the isness of anything, it will disappear. Uh, to have something, to have anything over a long period of time, particularly, you have to beware of recognizing what it is. Because if you look at it with a recognition of what it is, simply its isness, 
uh, this simple recognition will, of course, vanish it. So you have to be careful if you want something not to recognize what it is. <laughs> now, one of the best ways to have something for a long time is to put something in your pocket, you see, and then forget that it is there. And you'll have something in your pocket. You'll have something in your pocket, even though you've forgotten it's there. And that's the safest method of possession, is to forget that you have it. Because if you remember that you have it, you won't have it. Now, this would all be hopeless if there weren't another factor way above consideration, and that is knowingness. You know anything you want to know, and you know anything that has gone on. Now, let's take the person who is using facsimiles in order to tell him what has happened. He looks at the facsimile. The facsimile has certain pictures and symbols in it, so then he knows what took place. Well, he had to know what took place in order for a facsimile of that incident to be created. Now, he knew what took place so he could create a facsimile of the incident, and he does this on an unknowingness level. But above this level, he can then look at the picture and know what took place. But he had to know what took place before he made the picture. Now, if the picture's gone utterly and completely, he would still know what took place. Unless he has the consideration that he has to have a picture in order to prove to himself what took place. Now, anybody would know anything that was going on if he didn't have to prove it. Proof, conviction, and so forth is a very early level of aberration itself. As soon as you have to start proving things and convincing people of things, why, then you have to uh, get into agreement with them, and in order to do this, you have to alter isness. Uh, you have to have something to persist long enough for them to see it so that they can then understand what it is. So in order for them to really understand what it is, you can't possibly put up something that they understand what is. Because if they saw completely what it was and what is, why then, of course, naturally, uh, it would disappear. So you would not have been able to have proven it. I hope you follow this very closely, as actually everything I'm saying makes sense if strung together and looked at in a rational way. But if you try to alter it, if you try to alter it around, then you'll be able to remember it perfectly. But if you merely accept exactly what I am saying in each and every second that I am talking and so forth, you know this already so it won't exist. Now, this is a very bad thing, I realize. <clears throat> So the best thing for me to do would be to color, if I really wanted this material to be remembered, would be to color the material so that it, it uh, appeared to be something else than what it was. That would be the easiest way to get it remembered, get it complied with, to color the material. And I, I could do that, for instance, by talking about your, your uh, egg libido and your reconscious. Uh, I could uh, quote authorities who didn't exist. That's always best, you know. That's really a curve, you see. Nobody can ever see those, so they can't ever disappear. And I could quote these authorities which didn't exist, but which you couldn't disprove didn't exist, and we could go on about the counter-reflex of the cerebral palsy and uh, the, the uh, og libido, the bog libido, the sog libido, and the mog libido, and that we would categorize these things as explanatory to the behavior of, of uh, fishy uh, preservation on the part of young alligators. <laughs> and uh, this, of course, would then be utterly comprehensible because it could be so well remembered. It could be remembered perfectly in every detail. 
particularly if it were altered from what I was really talking about. I was trying to talk to you about turboelectric systems with that amount of data in it. We could go that far afield and you'd find that your brain would start hanging up on these non sequitur facts. Did you ever notice that? Well, as a person becomes unable to recognize the isness of the things, he can't get jokes anymore. Every datum that comes in must have a significance. You see, it never occurs to him it doesn't have a significance. There must be a deeper significance for something to remain. So this accounts for the facsimile bank of an individual, particularly when that facsimile bank of the individual is badly jammed and so on. Now we get somebody who has a badly jammed bank and we tell him, you have a right foot. All pre-clears have a right foot. In, a, in order to clear a pre-clear, all you have to do is reach over and touch their right foot, then have them touch their right foot, then you touch their right foot, then they touch their right foot, and they would be clear. And this might be true, you see. And you, you put it out in this wise, and you explained it very carefully, and you went over it many, many times, and he would get into an auditing session, and he would say, now let's see, what is the significance of touching the right foot? Well, obviously, the significance of touching the right foot means, of course, that the preclear must always be right. So therefore, what we should run on the preclear is the number of times that he has been wrong. Now, the best way to run this would be to remain out of contact with it, so the auditing command that he said obviously was bury and occlude and never have anything to do with all the times you've been wrong. And that would be the auditing command which would evolve out of this. Well, he would certainly get a preservation of data, wouldn't he? Boy, he'd really get a preservation of engram bank on the preclear, wouldn't he? Well, let's talk about these various categories of business. We find out each one has a gradient scale. And first there is as isness. This is the uh, first level that we encounter and is actually the disappearance level. As we are content or can accept things as they are, they won't exist. That is absolute. If we are content with and can accept things as they are, they won't exist. Why? The simple recognition of their existence will blow them into a consideration. A wall? What wall? We really know what a wall is. There isn't going to be a wall. That's as isness. And we see that mechanically. We have a lower mechanical strata on that, which is a perfect duplicate. If we make a perfect duplicate of a wall, boom, no wall. All right. Uh, that might be just for the Thetan, but it's certainly no wall. Anyway, uh, I at least will lead you down the track uh, to believing that you are not about to destroy the physical universe. Because I wouldn't want you to shy off from these processes just because they knocked out the physical universe. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, the next stage down the line from as isness is alter isness, the effort to preserve something by altering its characteristics. We make it as a simple consideration and then we alter the method by which we made it. In other words, let's dodge on it. Having mocked it up, we will now dodge and say, Joe mocked it up. Well, this is as far wrong as is necessary to get something to exist. But you have altered an as isness slightly in order to keep it from being perfectly duplicated. Now, if it is perfectly duplicated, of course, it's in its own time, its own space, 
with its own energy and mass, and it, of course, would cease to exist. So we, we enter into the field of alter isness as a method of preservation. And one seeks then, when he makes an object or a space, to get it to exist simply by saying somebody else did it, or it is a different kind of space, or its method of construction was different. We say God made it, or anything that would throw somebody off the track. Well, supposing God did make it, that'd be all right. It'd still blow if you looked at it, recognizing that God made it. Uh, your consideration is altered just enough so that you'll get a continuation of it. Now, people get uh, into alter isness simply by the process of having had too many things disappear. So we get a person who has lost many things, then trying to change everything. He's trying to shift the as isness of everything. He's trying to shift from as isness to alter isness. And so therefore, he's got to change the significances and structure and background and everything around him so that then these things will continue to exist. And that is his first impulse. Now, alter isness is simply the mechanism by which we persuade things to exist. We say there's something else than what they are, and after that they exist. See, because one hasn't duplicated them. We, we build a brick house and then cover it up with shingles, you see, and then say and insist in argument that it is built out of lumber. Well, that would rather consist of an, of an existence. We would get into enough of an argument with people trying to buy the house and so forth who could observably see that it was not totally a lumber house for them to get upset and worried enough, and that house is liable to persist in one's own ownership for some time if he just did that sort of thing. All right, we get alter isness then totally mechanically as a method of getting things to continue their existence. Now, that's a, uh, an important fact. Although the nomenclature here is simply chosen at random, it's a pretty good nomenclature because it says exactly what it means. The control case, by the way, is an alter ist. He's got to change, change. Well, he's lost too much, so now he's got to change everything. But he's not satisfied with anything. Uh, if he were walking down the street in a limber and loose fashion, he would think he had to walk in a tight fashion and so forth. He's become anxious about things disappearing, so he, of course, has to alter everything he sees in order to keep these things from disappearing. All right, now let's get <clears throat> into the next category, and we get not isness. Uh, now, this fellow has altered things up to a point where they're beginning to persist most damnably. In fact, he's upset about their continuous persistence. He doesn't think this is a good thing to have a FAC-1 camera staring him in the face all the time, uh, to uh, have the walls of the room appear to be 180 feet tall, although they're only 9 feet tall. It's not a good thing, this... Uh, uh, alter isness. He's concluded he's changed too many things. He's lost track. He isn't quite secure in, uh, in what the things were in the first place. He shifted them so often. He's like the small boy has told so many lies that he can no longer remember what lie he told, and so he's stuck with the lies and so becomes a human being. Now, the next step there, not isness, is manifested as unreality and is in itself the mechanism we know as unreality.
Now, uh, the next category, that's where things fade down, disappear, are made to be further away, dimmed, uh, poor perception, fellow's trying to make nothing out of things, he has to wear glasses that make uh, objects much smaller. And that, that's a case of not isness. Okay, now we go into the next category, which is the category of just plain isness. Well, this, of course, is not a bad thing. This, in its highest level, is what we call reality. That's just plain isness. Well, we could spell this with bigger and bigger caps. See, we could keep spelling is there with bigger caps and bigger caps and bigger caps and finally spell it with an exclamation point which would represent a cycle. There is a dragon in the middle of the room and he knows this. There are many other things which he doesn't know, but he knows this. When he gets a mock-up of an anchor point, he makes a pyramid out of solid iron. Uh, when he is asked to pick up one of his mock-ups, he knows he doesn't have that much strength. Uh, the world is too real. Now, once in a while, when somebody's just about to kill you, cut your throat or eat you up or arrest you or do something of the sort, you get an enormous flash of isness, a recognition of the situation. Boy, this is, it is real. Glug. A moment after that, you're liable to get, or postulate, as you would, uh, an immediate reaction of not isness. It's not real. A fellow will flare up and daze in about that order uh, from isness to not isness in a sudden emergency. Now, uh, alter isness, not isness, and isness would be then the categories which can be aberrated. But remember, these are not basically aberration. They only become aberration when they go entirely beyond the ability of the person to re-recognize as isness. When a person has lost his ability entirely to recognize as isness, He's gone. After that, he's stuck with and only has one of the remaining three, alter isness, not isness, and isness, or one of the three. All three or one or two of the three, some such combination, with no as isness left. Therefore, he gets everything persisting around him. He gets everything less and less changeable, and he goes into a dwindling spiral because he has lost his quality of as isness. That's all he's lost. When he loses that, of course, he gets stuck with one of these other qualities or some combination of them. You see how that is. Uh, the psycho who is walking around is made well simply by touching a few walls. I mean, you have him go around and touch walls for a little while, and all of a sudden he, he says it's a wall. <laughs> And he feels much better, and he knows he's in communication and so forth. Well, that's because he either has a case of not isness, there are no walls, or isness, there are walls all through the room and all through my mind, and I have barriers everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Uh, or there are no barriers anywhere, 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 which is just variations of not isness and isness. And you've shown him that there were walls, and these were agreed-upon walls, and, of course, that's way upscale. 
because you have demonstrated to him something closer to an as-isness. Now, each one of these is a gradient scale. And you know that you can recognize poorly enough the actual as-isness of something. You know, I mean, you just draw back just a tiny bit from the as-isness of something. In other words, indulge in just a little bit alter-isness or just a little bit not-isness or just a little bit isness, you know, making it a little bit more, and it'll persist with great satisfactoriness. Of course, if you walk up to it and simply hit it with as isness, it's not there anymore. You follow this very carefully because it's quite important, although the technology which we're using is elementary. Uh, we discover then that many philosophies, philosophies, now beware, 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 ding dong. You, you get this real carefully now. I'm only going to mention this once. And I, I don't want to hear anybody, hear anybody going off the deep end uh, in some direction or another, mounting a horse and dashing off in some direction. Many philosophies could be adjudicated out of these four categories. And believe me, any philosophy there is has been adjudicated from these four categories. This is the make root of all philosophy as well as all existence and you're standing right there at the tiniest co-point between mechanics and considerations that we have so far attained. All right. Now, you could then develop, as I said, many philosophies out of this. Now, the first and most dangerous of them would simply be this one. Well, I just have to accept everything as it is. And therefore, what we're really supposed to produce out of this is an apathy. Because if I had to accept everything as there is, there'd be nothing left but apathy. Because if I can't change it, I'm not sure. No, but I'll go into apathy. Now, I know what the auditor wants. He wants me to be apathetic about the whole thing. This is too easy a philosophy. This is the philosophy of Zeno. You can't do anything about it, so you might as well accept it, and everybody go into apathy and cut his throat anyhow. Well, now, we have an enormous number of things which we could say, uh, list, or categorize in terms of philosophy of this, and this is only one of them that will hit your pre clear. You see, he has to be able to accept his own restlessness before he can be restless. He has to accept his own dislike of things before he can dislike things. Remember, he has to accept something before he can have it, the case he's in. Because he has to get back some as isness before he can have any as isness. Well, now, he has to get back some as isness before he can become fluid in his practice of as isness, alter isness, not isness, and isness. And the business of life requires that he be quite able in all four categories. It's necessary to be able in all four categories, not just as isness, so you're not particularly specializing in this. But when it comes to this universe, you will discover that as you return your pre clear to as isness, things disappear. That may be regrettable. It may be interesting, it may be this and that, but those things too, just like opinions of art, are merely considerations. Now, the first, uh, the first step that we would uh, adventure upon in this would be a step which would be immediately addressed to such a thing as exteriorization. You would merely find what part of the body was acceptable to the preclear. You know, what part of the body was he able to accept as is. And we would go on asking this question and asking this question and asking this question. We could vary it by saying what part of the body would he be at liberty to alter as to its position or shape? Uh, what part of the body would he be, uh, would it be acceptable to him uh, on a, uh, an absent basis? What part of the body would be acceptable to him on a much more present basis? For instance, just a hand walking all around all by itself. 
indicated processes. Actually, this processing is so good that you can almost <laughs> take any part of it and just work with it. Indicated process on as isness is simply done with that command. What part of your body is acceptable to you? What part of the environment would be acceptable to you? And you'd merely have him improve his considerations. And if he hangs up too long, you could say, well, now, uh, can you accept your dislike of? Of course, it just involutes. He, he can just watch it. It just sort of goes away. <laughs> it's terrible. The first thing he could recognize is the fact that he disliked the environment, all right. Well, can he accept his dislike of the environment? The second he does this, he has recognized the as isness of his dislike. Which moment will blow it? Now, you can get him to recognize the existence of anything as such, and it'll disappear. Now, uh, just by getting him to accept parts of the body, just on this simple auditing command, what part of the body could you accept? Give me another part of the body you could accept. There's tremendous calm lags on this. You could say, well, what, how would it have to be altered for you to accept it? Uh, what would it be fine uh, to have absent about this body? Then we can turn around and say, what's the acceptance level of your body about a Thetan? Now, he doesn't do this by mock-ups, you understand. That's the trick. You didn't concentrate on the actual body. Does it accept the Thetan this way or that way or how? Or what condition, what distance could your face tolerate to a Thetan? We already have this on exteriorization processing. But without this one fact stressed, which makes it the difference between a workable technique and a non-workable technique. What distance is acceptable? What distance would be comfortable from your face to the Thetan? Well, where would your face accept a Thetan? And the first thing you know, you have spotted the preclair. I mean, the face seems to have spotted him, then he spots himself. But the whole thing would run out without any such complexity of command at all. You would merely ask him, what is acceptable to you in the environment? Look around and simply go over it, one item after another item after another item, and his, his considerations will improve, which is the modus operandi behind HC opening procedure, except you're not doing it with any further consideration. If you ran HC opening procedure long enough on a pre-clear, he would find the entire environment he'd been working in certainly very, very acceptable to him. We could just continue to run this as what part of the environment is acceptable to you, and he begins to check them off, check them off, check them off, check them off, and he would eventually get down to his body, and having gotten down to his body, uh, and taken care of the space around the body and that sort of thing, having gotten down to the body, we'd take it by parts of the body, what parts of the body acceptable to you, and just on and on and on, and he'd be out there standing in back of his head. Now, that's the easiest method of exteriorization I know in the method which I commonly use when I am balked by a pre-clear uh, because it's a, an easy and certain process. It's a rather short process, really. Uh, you just ask him to pick up the as-isness of his environment and body, and if he really recognizes it, believe me, he'll be outside, and that is simply done with that auditing command. This is the easiest process I know of any place, anywhere. So... We have it. Once in a while he says, well, I really dislike this and that. Well, can you accept your dislike of it? This will involute it, which is the only additional command I think I've ever used. Okay, so much for, for as isness, alter isness, not isness, and isness. All cases fall into these <coughs> categories. This is a lecture by L. Ron Hubbard given on the 23rd of July, 1954. The title of this lecture is Isness. This lecture is 29 minutes long. Reproduced by Golden Era Productions.
want to talk to you now about four conditions of consideration. We start out at the beginning or anywhere along the road with this as the highest truth. We are dealing with a static which can consider. That it can consider and then perceive what it considers makes it a space, energy, mass, time, production unit. That it can perceive what it considers makes this static into a space, energy, mass, and time production unit. You see, the, don't ever get hung up on whether or not the actuality that is made is an actuality. Uh, this is the wrong way to approach this problem. It's the way people have been approaching this problem for so long that uh, the problem has remained uh, up to this time pretty darned abstruse. That you can perceive something and that you can perceive that somebody else also perceives something qualifies only one of these conditions of existence. It qualifies only one of the conditions. That's isness. And that is reality, isness. Now, uh, that you simply say something is there and then perceive that it is there means simply that you have put something there and perceived that it is there. That's what it means. But that is no less an isness. That nobody is there to agree with you at the time you do this does not reduce the fact that you have created an isness. It is an isness. It exists. It exists. Not just for you. I mean, it just exists, you see. Now, if you were to now desire that that persisted, you would then have to go through a certain mechanical step. You would have to make sure that you did not perfectly duplicate it. That is, create it again in the same time, in the same space, with the same mass and the same energy, because it would no longer be there. But what have you done, really, when you've done that? You've just taken a thorough look. And what you create will vanish if you simply look at it, unless you pull this trick. Unless you pull the trick that it is alterable and that you have altered it. Now, if you say you have altered it, and now that you have forgotten the exact instant it was made and the character of it, it, of course, then can persist. Because you can look at it all you please with your first look, you might say, and it won't vanish. Don't look at it, however, with your second look, because it'll be gone. Again, you will have duplicated it. A perfect duplicate. The definition of a perfect duplicate is creating a thing again in its same time, in its same space, with its same energy, mass, motion, or continuance. Now that's a perfect duplicate. Uh, for instance, if we looked here at the uh, front of the room, saw an object, we would simply uh, have to look at it and conceive ourselves to have made its exact duplicate or counterpart, which is to say, conceive ourselves to have made it. Just conceive ourselves as creating it. In other words, just no more, no less than that. And of course, it would get rather thin, but to some who are having a rough time 
uh, with conditions of existence, it will get brighter and brighter and brighter and then get thinner and thinner and thinner, and it'll disappear for one. This is a curious thing, but is immediately subjected to and uh, can be subjected to a very exacting proof. All right, now let's uh, look at this very carefully and let's look at what reality is. Reality is a postulated reality. Reality does not have to persist to be a reality. The condition of reality is simply isness. That is the total condition of reality. Now we get a more complex reality when we enter into the formula of communication. Because this takes somebody else. We have to say we are somebody else now viewing this and that we don't know when it was made or where it was made to get a persistence of the object for that somebody else. But let us say we just more or less accidentally go into communication with somebody else and we have an argument, that is to say, a chitter-chatter back and forth about what this thing is. If that other person perfectly duplicates exactly what we have created, it will again disappear. It doesn't matter, really, who created it. He only has to assume that he created for it to disappear for him. In other words, he has to duplicate it in its same space, same energy, same mass, at the same instant it was created. And it'll disappear for him. So you and he had better alter this thing which you made so that you both can perceive it. And then we get what is known as an agreed-upon reality. And that is an isness with agreement. Now, actually, the word reality itself is commonly accepted to mean uh, that which we perceive. Now, uh, this, then, uh, is the real definition for a reality, the one that is commonly used, and that would be an agreed-upon isness. An agreed-upon isness, that would be a reality. All right, so much for that. We have another condition. A not isness is a protest. The common practice of existence, of course, is to try to banish an isness by using it to destroy itself. Uh, they take uh, a mock up of some kind or another, uh, such as a building or something of the sort, and they try to destroy it by blowing it down with dynamite or doing something like that. I mean, it's a very practical application, this material I'm giving you. It isn't esoteric. It doesn't particularly apply to the engram bank. This is just existence. All right. Is can be translated quite generally as existence. All right. Uh, we, we get a not isness being enforced upon an isness by the quality of the isness itself or by a new postulate by which the individual is saying, it's not there. Now, this new postulate does not pattern the mechanics of the creation of the isness. The new postulate, which you simply say, it's not there, doesn't pattern itself with the exact time of creation, the exact space, the exact continuance, uh, same mass, same space, same time. And as a consequence, uh, we say, all right, it's not there. It will probably dim down for you, but you have to do something else. You have to put a black screen up or push it away or uh, chew it up or do something to it here rather than giving it a perfect duplicate, which we'll get to in a moment. But we do something else here. We say it's not there, and that's not isness. We, we say something doesn't exist, which we know darn well does exist. See? Now, you have to know something darn well does exist before you can try to postulate it out of existence and thus create a not-isness.
Now, the definition of not isness would be simply a definition of trying to create out of existence by postulate or force something which one knows priorly exists. One is trying to talk against his own agreements and postulates with his new postulate, or is trying to spray down something with the force of other isnesses in order to cause a secession of the isness he objects to. And this is the handling of mass to handle mass, of force to handle force, and is definitely and positively wrong if you ever want to destroy anything. That is not the way to go about destroying something. That is the way to destroy yourself, which is why nations engage in it. Force versus force. Uh, we see a very badly misunderstood rendition of this in uh, early Christian times with the introduction of the idea that if you were hit, you should turn the other cheek. Well, that's a very, very bad thing to do. Uh, the truth of the matter is, uh, if it were rendered this wise, it would have made much more sense. Uh, when you encountered force, don't apply more and new force to conquer the force which has been exerted. Because if you do, you will then be left with a chaos of force. And pretty soon you won't be able to trace anything through this chaos of force. You see. So turn the other cheek is actually a very workable situation if it's simply translated to mean uh, force must not be used to combat force. Now, the way to properly handle such a situation is just to duplicate it perfectly. All right, now let's go into this business of a perfect duplicate. A perfect duplicate, again, is, you might say, creating the thing once more in the same time, in the same space, with the same energy and the same mass. A perfect duplicate is not made by mocking the thing up alongside of itself. That is a copy, or more technically, a facsimile, a made facsimile. Copy and facsimile, by the way, the same words. But a facsimile we conceive to be something, a picture which was taken of the physical universe and a copy would be something that a Thetan, uh, on his own volition, simply made of an object in the physical universe with full knowingness. In other words, he copied it. He, he knows he's copying it. A facsimile can be made without one's knowledge by a machine or the body or something of that character. All right. This is a perfect duplicate mechanically, but it is more important to recognize it in the terms of our four categories of existence. It's as isness. If we can recognize the total as isness of anything, it will vanish. Sometimes, if it had many component parts, we would have to recognize the total as isness as including the as isness of each component part of it. Now, in that lies the secret of destroying actual matter. An actual matter can be destroyed by a Thetan, if he is willing to include in the as isness, which he is now postulating toward any object which exists, toward any isness, the as isness of each component part. Now, let's look at that very rapidly and recognize here that uh, a Thetan creates, he created a mock-up. And uh, this mock-up uh, was agreed upon very widely, and uh, the, another process, alterism, which we'll go into in a moment, was addressed to it, and it became more and more solid and more and more solid. And then one day, somebody cut it in half and dragged part of it uh, up the hill to make somebody's doorstep. And uh, that's already you see, out of location. Same place is part of this mock-up. Same space, same place. 
So it's already been removed from the place it was mocked up, you see, and it's been moved up to the top of the hill. Now it's making somebody's doorstep. Now those people themselves don't quite remember where the doorstep came from, if asked suddenly. But after a while, these houses up there, and by the way, just mock-ups like everything else, are torn down or something, and somebody picks up this doorstep and uh, chews it up for road ballast, throws it out in the road to be used for road, and they make a road with it, and it just runs just fine. Well, this is alongside of some wharves, and uh, one day, why uh, the road no longer being used, they, they now have a big long steel pier or something comes out there. And uh, somebody uses a steam shovel to pick up a whole bunch of rocks and gravel and dump them into the hold of a ship which is going to South Africa or something of the sort. And it takes it down there, and they unload this ballast, uh, and the natives use it to gravel the garden or something. And uh, at length, why, there's a volcanic explosion that's buried under 12 feet of lava, and time marches on, in other words. And uh, this thing is getting more and more remote from its agreed-upon uh, original position, much less its, its postulated moment. The moment it was postulated as related to the time span of the uh, people who were agreeing upon it. You see, they've agreed upon a time span, so this thing is aging, and they agreed upon this space too, and it's getting moved around in this space, and here, atom by atom, as the aeons roll along, this object, which was part of an original mock-up, is now distributed all over the place. Uh, it'd be fairly hard to trace unless you suddenly took a good look at it and sort of asked it uh, or located it easily. Now, conservation of energy blows up uh, if anything is created in the same time and space. In view of the fact that the time itself is a postulate, it's very easy to reassume the first time of anything. Just like you ask a person in Dianetics to go back to the moment when. Well, he could reassume the time. And if you would also ask him to go to the moment when and the place where, if we had just added that, and then said, okay, now duplicate it with its own energy, why it would have blown up. And this, by the way, runs out n-grams, and it blows up n-grams like mad. It is not a process that we would use today particularly, but it's a process that you should know about. So a person, to create an as-isness, uh, would have to create the as-isness of the object itself and all of its parts. And only at that moment would he escape the law of conservation of energy. Conservation of energy depends upon the chaos of all parts of all things being mixed up with all the parts of all the things. In other words, we couldn't have any conservation of energy unless we were all completely uncertain uh, as to where this atom or that atom originated. And if we were totally uncertain as to the original uh, creation spot in the space of the atom, uh, molecule, proton, whatever, uh, if we were to remain totally ignorant, we of course could not destroy it because force will not destroy it. Force will not destroy anything made of force. And uh, in view of the fact that, uh, that you'd have to make as many as isnesses as there are the atoms in the object, why it looks awfully complex unless you could span your attention that wide and that fast. And of course, at that moment, why it would blow up. Therefore, conservation of energy is exceeded. It itself is a consideration. Now, we've taken care of as isness by this mechanics of a perfect duplicate. As isness would be the condition created again in the same time, in the same space, same place, with the same energy and the same mass, the same motion, in the same time continuum. The, the same time continuum is only incidentally important. It's only, it comes up as importance when you're crossing between universes. And particles do not cross between universes. A particle is only as good as it is riding on its own time continuum. You destroy the time continuum, and of course no, uh, no activity can take place from that moment forward. That's completely aside from this. 
I mean, there, here's, here's Group A, and they made a set of postulates, which gives them certain energy and mass. And over here is Group B, and they make a certain set of postulates. And unless Group A and Group B get together and mutually agree to accept each other's masses, why, you just would never get to a point where the mass created by Group A and the mass created by Group B would interchange. Somebody has to be around always who is part and parcel of the creation of the mass looked at, at least by agreement. See, he has to be around at least by agreement. And, and we get a time continuum. We get a continuous consciousness. Now, there's this thing they talk about when they talk about cosmic consciousness, which is a very, very fancy word for saying, well, we've all been here for a long time. Uh, we could translate it much more intelligibly that way. All right, now let's take this as isness and let's discover that if a thing will disappear, if a mock-up will disappear, and that too can be subjected to proof very easily, if a mock-up can disappear simply by creating it in the same time, in the same space, with the same energy and same mass, in other words, just repeat the postulate, you might say, if it had disappeared, the second you applied as isness, then people start avoiding as isness in order to have an isness. And that is done by alter isness. We have to change the character of something. We have to lie about it for it to exist. And so we get any universe being a universe of lies. Then when this universe of lies compels you to tell its truth, we can get very confused. We go back in history, uh, we find people on every hand telling us, well, maybe, uh, maybe there was such a person as Christ, and maybe there wasn't, and maybe he wrote this, and maybe he didn't, and maybe the material came from here, and it came from there, and boy, are they giving him survival. Why? Survival itself is dependent upon alter isness. A-L-T-E-R. Alter isness. In order to get an as isness to persist, it is absolutely necessary then that its moment of creation be masked. Its moment, space, mass, and energy, if duplicated, would cause that to cease to exist. The recognition of as isness will bring about a nonness, bring about a disappearance. In other words, a return to basic postulate. Then you'd have to make the postulate all over again, and then to get it to exist any further, why, you, you would then have to go forward and change it in such a way that people would not actually be able to recognize its source at all. You just have to obscure the devil out of the source in order to get a persistence. You see that? You'd have to say it came from somewhere else by somebody else. Now, you, you see people have done this with such things as Dianetics. Uh, the last uh, rave I read on this subject claimed that it was really invented in the late part of the 18th century by a guy by the name of Hickelhauser or Purcellhoser or something. This is a fact. I mean, uh, uh, here we had something uh, which could be unmocked very easily because it was set up to be unmocked. See, it just set up to unmock. Very, very easy to simply say that it's as isness with such and so and so and so. And it would have practically disappeared if, if you'd continued to assert that it's as isness was what it's as isness was. In order to get a persistence of it, of any kind, we would have had to have done something very strange and peculiar. We would have had to have altered it. We would have had to have entered the practice of alter isness. Now we, we begin alter isness, and uh, we have uh, the thing persisting. Something will persist then only so long as it is not perfectly duplicated, which is to say, it's as isness isn't recognized. You see that? So that if we try to alter something bad, we'll make it persist, one way or the other. 
But don't think that you, if we're going to alter something that just as is, we will get an isness. Anytime we practice alter isness on anything, what do you know? We will get an isness. Whether it's bad or good, beautiful or ugly, whenever we practice alter isness, we are going to then get a persistence of the condition. Now, this is about the highest common denominator that you could talk about this on. So that if you knew this data, you could, however, practice alter isness. Oh, ho. We just took an axe and uh, took a long, sharp heave and, and, and blew the whole thing up in smoke. Bang. Axe blade went all the way through. If you know that life is basically a consideration of a static, which is not located in time, space, which has no mass, energy, or wavelength, then, if you know also that as isness is a condition which will unmock or disappear, that you have to practice alter isness in order to get an isness. that after an isness has occurred, the mechanism of handling it is to postulate a not isness or use force to bring about a not isness, and that any further alter isness practiced on it will only continue to create an isness of this new condition, and that every new isness is going to be met by the postulated or force uh, handled not isness, and that every not isness is going to be followed by an alter isness, which is going to result in a persistence of what we now have. We begin to see after a while that there was no way out of this giddy little maze of mirrors except this recognition that we have a static that can consider, and the pattern by which we arrived at what we call reality, solidity, and so forth, is contained in these four conditions. The cycle of existence is then for a static to consider an isness, as an as isness. See, it just says there is. That's as isness. And then to alter the as isness even to his own recognition, and obscure his knowingness as to that as isness, to procure an isness. That having procured an isness, he usually can be counted upon sooner or later to practice a not isness, and not liking the result since what he, the isness he was contesting, you see, doesn't disappear. It simply hangs up and he gets unhappy about it, you see. He now would practice a new alter isness, which would get a confirmation of the not isness he now has, which would then persist. And we find out that life can enter itself upon a very, very dizzy cycle. The new isness is treated with a, an alter isness, is followed by a not isness and is followed again by a new condition, which is persisting, a new isness. And so we get this back and forth and seesawing around. Now, this depends upon a basic postulate that we agree that things proceed in a fairly orderly fashion or a uniform rate of spacing or at speed or at tolerance or something of the sort. Time has to be entered in there, and we must have had a postulate right in there ahead of all of these isnesses that would determine whens. And in the absence of that, when you'd get no time continuum, so there'd never be any such thing as a persistence. So time fits right in there.
Now, do you see this progress of these various conditions? I think that uh, the problem of existence now narrows down just to this is an examination of the actual agreements of time to blow all the conditions of isnesses. But uh, the agreements as to time itself are conditional upon what was created in the time stream. And we get a basic postulate in there, resistant to all effects as being time itself. Resistance to all effects. Well, anyway, these are the four conditions of isnesses and the various definitions which accompany them and will explain any manifestation of life, human behavior, matter, space, or time.